Welcome to the next Moto Champion Talk Show. I'm Danielle Teal and my co-host John Boucher. We bring you the future of motorcycle racing here at Next Moto Champion. New news, World Superbike is two rounds in and the heat is on. This month's issue of Next Moto Champion Magazine has Leon Hazem on the cover. And we're following him, Ray, Lowe's, Davies, and all the young and hungry World Superbikers on their way to a new championship. Did you catch MotoGP season opener? Well, it was incredible. We had the projector set up here at Next Moto Champion headquarters. We were streaming live coverage of the races with our feet kicked up, just enjoying the start of the 2015 season. It was Jorge, then it was Dovi, it was Iannone, then it was back to Dovi, it was Rossi, then it was Dovi. The Ducatis were looking stronger than they looked in years, but ultimately it was Rossi who got the win and Rossi fans around the world rejoiced. And that's the way you start a season right there. And now for our guest on tonight's show is TJ Tennant from Bridgestone Tires. He's the engineering manager with years of experience and he's here to give you an in-depth look at the tire that makes MotoGP go round and how it relates to you on the track. But first, this week's product spotlight. This week's product spotlight is one that you may have never seen before. This is called Grip and Ride, and it's worn by the driver of a jet ski, a snowmobile, and especially a motorcycle. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to hold on to. Uh, it gives you some great back support. It's a pretty cool little thing. Right. It's a belt worn by the driver or rider, and uh, gives you four different options here. Uh, obviously, two at the same time here or farther back. It's got not only a Velcro, but also a uh, belt clip closure type tab. Uh, it's really secure. It's, it's supposed to make the rider on the back of the bike feel a lot more comfortable holding on. It gives you just more support, more security than just standard uh, holding around the stomach. I think it worked really good like if, if maybe you were a bigger guy and somebody couldn't fit their arms all the way around, this is a really good option. Also you can hold on from the from the front but you know for those hard braking times when that rider kind of smashes into the back of you and you go up against the tank, this is also something you can turn around and they can reach from the back and it'll help to push their weight off so they're not smashing to the back of you when, you when it comes to a braking time. Right, so good for a bigger guy or for a smaller girl on the back um, and it says it, it holds up to 350 pounds. So, so. it would work for you, yeah. Yes, it would work for me. But uh, perhaps the coolest feature on here is the fact that you can customize um, the, the logo on the front. You can put a logo, a crest, a photo, uh, anything you like really. They're made in the USA, so it's a really cool product. Um, and did we say that it also could double as a wrestling championship belt. Absolutely, and you can pick these up for around $89 at gripandride.com. Very cool, check it out. Next up, you techies are going to love this. John Boucher and engineering manager TJ Tennant from Bridgestone are going to talk tires when we come back from this commercial break. Protect your motorcycle from rust with the Z-Rust Cycle Vault. Pick it up at zrustproducts.com. Great rates for great rides. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. Evil Technology. 100% American-made precision parts and accessories at eviltechnology.com. CoreMoto Performance Brake Lines. Check them out at coremoto.com.
So today we have a special treat, and for those of you that don't know it, we are in Nashville, Tennessee, and one of the companies that are based out of Nashville, Tennessee is Bridgestone Firestone. And I thought that I like motorcycles, but our guest today, <laughs> TJ Tennant from Bridgestone, is an absolute motorcycle freak. And lucky for us, he brought a, t a bunch of different things to talk about. He brought some tire samples. Um, he is truly, truly an expert, not just on tires, but on motorcycles himself. TJ, tell us a little bit about, I'm already impressed, you don't have to, <laughs> but for, for, for those that haven't been talking to you for the last hour, Tell us a little bit about kind of what makes you the man that Bridgestone sends out anytime something like this goes on. Well, uh, I'm one of the engineering managers at the Bridgestone corporate office here in Nashville. Uh, but outside of Bridgestone, some of the other things that I partake in, I'm on the TRA, which is the Tire and Rim Association Motorcycle Subcommittee. And me and other engineers from other manufacturers actually set the standards on all motorcycle tires set in North America. I'm also a member of MIC, which is the Motorcycle Industry Council, AMA, bunch of other things, but even more so than that, one of the really fun things that I do in addition to my regular day job, which is this, is I'm a motorcycle safety instructor for the MSF. I've been doing that for about eight years. I don't know, I've trained over a thousand students here within the, the state of Tennessee, not just here in Nashville, but in other cities here within the state. So I've been dealing with this a long, long time. I, I, I work with uh, law enforcement, Department of Defense, the whole gambit. So motorcycling, I live, eat, and breathe motorcycling. But uh, my wife is also a motorcyclist. If she didn't ride, I wouldn't have married her. <laughs> but we've owned over 100 motorcycles, us, ourselves personally. And uh, it, I just love it. I, I, when I think about motorcycles, a smile comes across my face. When I hear one, I want to see what kind of bike it is. So I, I really love motorcycles. Well, you brought some uh, a little bit of show and tell for us today, and you and I already got a little carried away, kind of going through these things. And I said, "Hold on, we got to save some of it <laughs> for the actual talk show." But uh, give us an idea. I mean, these are tire cuts, and some of these, are, all of these, are things that you've done yourself. I think you said this one comes from Bridgestone, and the rest of these you kind of went through and did yourself. Yeah. And you've basically dissected these things. Give us an idea of the different uh, types of cuts and the different things that we're looking at. And these are all different. Manufacturers, yes, and tires, across so. the board, uh, Bridgestone, Michelin, Pirelli, Dunlop, and and, and being an engineer myself, I, I'm naturally curious. So I want to see what other manufacturers are doing similar to us or different than us, and maybe try to use some of that information and test within our own products to make our products better. Their engineers, my counterparts with them, they do the same thing. I hope. One of the things that I want to talk about is tire construction today, because it's really, really important that people understand how motorcycle tires are constructed. Uh, today, a lot of tires, not necessarily full-blown race tire, but track day tires, ultra high performance tires, touring tires, will, uh, will have uh, one, two, three, even four compounds occasionally. And this kind of illustrates that on the tread, where you've got a center compound that's set up to give you a whole lot more mileage, because uh, somebody on a GT type bike is going to spend more time upright. But if they've got a GT bike, one of the things they're going to want to do is get into the curves a little bit, maybe turn that throttle a little bit. So on the shoulder area, you're going to have a more aggressive compound for a lot more traction, right. which is important. You don't want a, a hard compound, and I don't want to use the word hard because technology surpassed that. It could be hard, but have a whole lot more traction than even a softer to the touch compound or using a durometer. And then one of the other technologies that has come abroad in the last probably five years is monospiral wind on the belt package of motorcycles. And that's wait, when wait, they- slow down, hold on. Monospiral on the what, what, say again? <laughs> <laughs> That's a monospiral wind, and they take a strand, a single fiber, it, and it may be two fibers wrapped by one or three wrapped by two, it depends on the philosophy, and they wrap it around the tire kind of like a fishing line okay. would be. And that's what this is right here. This is a monospiral wind belt on here. And if you look at these other high performance tires from other manufacturers, very, very similar philosophy mm -hmm. and technology. And then we go into the belt, to, to the casing of the tire and the belt angles and that. But this monospiral wind is really, really cool technology. It gives the tire a consistent footprint, whether you're at a 30 degree lean, lean angle or you're at 50 miles an hour or 150 miles an hour, the patch is consistent. So that when you twist the throttle, the tire behaves the same way at very high speeds as it did at very low speeds. Right. So there's some consistency and you, you expect certain things to happen. Now here, let's get into this racing tire right here. As you can see, it's got a monospiral wind, but the thing that's different about this, which is really cool, is it's got aramid fibers on here. Not necessarily steel like this one or that one, and it's got aramid because it's a race tire, we want to reduce the amount of heat that this tire is experiencing. So if we had steel, steel conducts heat, 
and the tire fluctuates in temperature and that kind of thing during the race, which equates to inconsistency of tire performance. Where here, we've got a tire that's a lot lighter, so you got less gyroscopic forces. It's easier to whip left and right and that kind of thing. And then with this particular belt, it's stronger than steel, doesn't conduct heat. So you got a tire that runs probably at a lower temperature or doesn't maintain that peak temperature as much. Are there other materials they use besides aramid and steel? That's a great question. That is a really good question because we use polyester, we use rayon, we use nylon. A lot of times we use nylon cap plies on them because nylon under heat actually shrinks, wants to shrink down and help it maintain the same footprint. In other words, the centrifugal forces as the tire is going around want to make that tire grow out in the center. That nylon keeps it together, maintains that same footprint at slow or high speeds. That's a fabulous question. And let's look at these two here. Both these are ultra high performance tires. This is a race tire. We're looking at ultra high performance now. Similar technology, also monospiral wind, but the difference is, is the fibers. These are basically two fibers wound together, a little space, two fibers and a little space. Same thing here, but this could be two wrapped by three or two wrapped by one, and this one's wrapped differently. Similar technology, slightly different philosophy, little bit different performance. And then let's go here. This is basically, these are almost track day tires, ultra high performance. This is a high performance tire. And then again, we've got, this is polyester as opposed to aramid. Right. Still light, very, very strong, but meant to carry a little more weight. So that's the difference in philosophies. You got a full blown track day, you got ultra high performance, and then you've got kind of a high end GT type tire. And the reason that uh, we race is we want that information. We want that test, which we get from racing, that technology. That transfers into these tires. But when you look at this tire versus this one, there's a significant cost difference. When you look at Aramid versus steel, Aramid is quite a bit more expensive than steel. Okay. So over time, as we develop that technology, we get the price down, and it's more of a retail cost-effective cost tire where this may not be. Right. And there's also going to be a trade-off with the compound, the, the tread compound itself. On a race tire, I don't expect to get 8, 10, 12, 15,000 miles. It's a race tire. Right. Whereas these, we're going to go back to the dual compound. We we'll assume that even if you got a sport bike, you, unless you're going to do a track day and use a track day tire like this RS10 or something, we assume that you're going to spend most of your time upright, right. so it's going to probably be a dual compound or even a, a triple compound. And then last but not least, I don't want to spend a lot of time on these. These are uh, touring type tires, GT full-blown touring tires. As you can see, a little bit different philosophy. They don't have the monospiral wind because we assume you're not going to be doing 100 plus miles an hour on these right. and the loads are going to be a lot heavier. But you can also tell a lot on the tread compound where the tread compound on the newer tires is more of an aligned type tread compound so it has more of a secure feel in the turns. If you look at this, which is one of Bridgestone's newest tires, it's got what's called a 3D tread. And it's called that because at full tread depth in the brand new tire, you can get some tread squirm. This prevents that tread squirm, allows a very, very secure ride at high speeds through the turns, upright, in the wet, and in the dry. And it feels almost soft to the touch right now. It I mean, feels soft to yeah. the touch. Very, very great tire. Good for if you got an ultra high performance bike, um, you know, leader and higher, and you want to do a track day, perfect tire for you. This is pretty cool stuff, but I know for our audience, for those guys out there doing track days and the amateur racers uh, running all over the country, I know one of the things that they're always talking about and always, you know, the conversation that always comes up at the track is this, tire warmers. Tire warmers, man. So, <laughs> How long to leave them on, you know, and I'm telling you guys, get out your notepad because TJ is going to give you the exact information. It's not often that you get to actually talk to the engineering manager from Bridgestone, so get out your notepad. But uh, a little bit about, you know, kind of track day prep for um, uh, a race prep, track day prep, you know, tire warmers and tire pressure, very, very important stuff. Yeah, I highly, highly, highly recommend tire warmers. If you are going to do any kind of track day, even if you're a novice, get those tires warmed up to that core temperature. You don't want to leave uh, any kind of tire warmer, regardless of the manufacturer, on for more than an hour. Right. That is just entirely too long. The tire's already reached its peak then, and now you're just cooking the tire. So uh, you want to get it on for at least an hour before the race, no longer than that, and the tire's now up to temperature. 
the next. Go ahead. So I'm sorry, TJ. When you say up the temperature, what what temperature are you suggesting? That temperature could be anywhere between 135 degrees and 165 or 70 degrees, depending on the tire and the type of tire warmer. Right. We do not want to see a tire at 200 degrees. Okay. If it's at 200 degrees, that is not helping the tire operate any better right. than it would have at the lower temperature. Optimally. Is we're going to be around that 135, 165, 170 range. We okay. don't need to be any hotter than that. Now, when you get in on a race course, if you're somewhere in the middle of the summer, yeah, you could see 200 uh, uh, degrees or something like that, but not a whole lot often. I've seen it at Daytona where they get up to 220, 230, but even right. at, at a Daytona with a professional rider, that's still way up there, okay. and the tire is not at, at its optimum there. Right. So when one of the things that we want to talk about also is air pressure wow air pressure is so supremely important and i'm going to mention air pressure a lot in this segment because it is so important and when you get out on the track you want to check your air pressure and the best thing is to document especially if you're going for more than one track even if you're doing just a track day you want to document what your air pressure is and some things that seem monday as mundane is was it cloudy or was it sunny right. you want to not only take the tire temperature but you also want to take the track, the, the track surface temperature because all that information is going to be supremely valuable later on in your career or just doing a track day. Okay. But when we set our air pressure, whatever you normally set your air pressure, set it at that, put your warmer on, get on the track, and if you've got a, any kind of pyrometer or infrared temperature gauge right. or something, you want to check the temperature across the surface of the tire, not just at one point and then go with that. You want to check it at least three points. The, the left side, the center, and then the right side, and document that as well. Now, if you notice that it's not turning in as quick or, or the back end is skipping or something, you may want to adjust the air pressure accordingly, and you never want to adjust that air pressure more than one, maybe one and a half PSI. Okay. Two PSI doesn't seem like a lot. It could seriously right. affect the handling of that motorcycle. Right. And you want to also note, when you, you take a note of the temperature that day, the track temperature, if it's hot, typically you want to put more air in because that decreases the friction of the tire and the, and the surface and any internal components of the tire and the tire and the wheel. And it makes it last longer, traction better. If it's a cold day, you want to decrease the air pressure in that tire because what that does is create more friction and bring the tire up to temperature quicker. Right. A lot of racers don't understand that process or they get in and they're just kind of bumping it up and down really really take the time to document i cannot express right. how important it is it, and i mean i'm guilty of this myself but i mean there's times i've been to a track that i haven't been to before and i'll go ask somebody hey what tire pressure you're running and it might be a three pound drop but you're saying don't drop it all three pounds no, at once. Okay. no no way and also what your buddy's running may not be what you want to run because your right. buddy may be one of those racers who wants who kind of likes backing it into the right. turns and you may be one of those riders who likes railing it in right. but you want to make sure your tire is at its optimum three pounds two pounds too much okay. because if it throws it off and it's still operating bad it may be operating it may be operating bad on the negative side you drop two or three psi now it's operating bad on the positive side and you said well that didn't do anything but you got all this delta or this source in between that you didn't use to adjust the right air pressure. So right. never, ever, ever go that high. All right, now, we, we were going to peel this thing off. We're, you're, yeah. We're getting excited yeah. about Because we got an actual real, we got a race tire here. We're going to peel our cap it. A real tire, race tire. Bro. Tire warmer off and uh, get to uh, a little bit a little bit more of the bare bones here. This Wow, this thing is awesome. I, 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 it, it's such a cool tire. One of the things with a race tire that's really, really important is that when you look at the side and you can kind of see a few what we call striations on the side, this tire was probably operating at the right temperature at the right pressure. And sometimes you'll see where it's balling up on the side, you get the little mm -hmm. rubber beads sure. and stuff like that, then that tire is probably getting too hot. One of the other things, and you can't really see it on this tire, is bluey. It's kind of like when you take a drop of oil and you put it in water and you see that blue hue. Right. Same thing, if you see that, that means this tire is too hot. And what you want to do is increase the air pressure. One PSI, guys and, and gals, one PSI at a time, front and rear, to make sure you adjust it so it's operating optimally. We don't have enough time to get into it in this segment. Maybe we'll get into it at a later date. But looking at the tire tells you a whole lot right. about how it's operating. And me, visually, looking at this tire, the aesthetics of this tire says, whoever used this tire, hopefully it was you. Yeah. <laughs> got everything that they were going to get out of this tire. There's no blue hue. There's not a lot of striations on the side. 
this tire was operating at its absolute optimum during race day. Nice. One of the other things that I wanted to talk about too is nitrogen versus compressed air. And I know a lot of people have questions about that. Oh, my buddy uses nitrogen and I use compressed air. Well, you know, some people use nitrogen because they say, well, the nitrogen's molecules are bigger, so uh, they, they don't seep out of the tire as quickly. Some people say, well, the nitrogen's drier. There's a lot of different reasons, but I'm gonna just, just give you the facts. And the facts are nitrogen and compressed air molecules are about the same size in any tire, race tire, uh, retail tire, passenger and light truck, you're gonna lose about one PSI per month. So you need to check that air on your street bike, not necessarily your race bike, different thing altogether. Now, uh, with compressed air, you wanna make sure that air is dry. If you've got your own compressor, you wanna change the air dryer, you wanna drain the tank, because the culprit, especially if you wanna do a track day or even on the street, is moisture. All of us have been to the gas station before where you pull up and you squeeze that little air thing, you gotta pump out a gallon of water yeah. before you get to the air. Yeah. That is not good. Go ahead and lose that dollar or 75 cents, go to a different one. Nitrogen, the best thing about nitrogen is that it is dry. It is always dry. You gotta pay for it, but it is dry. But, and because it's dry, what hurts you on the track is if you've got that moisture and that moisture is conducting heat, number one, and those air molecules that are in there are expanding and contracting. And that's where you get the inconsistency of tire performance, you get the inconsistency in the life of the tire and all the other things that you look for on the track. So if you wanna use nitrogen, I'm gonna say 100% of the time, do so if you choose. But if you maintain your compressor and the air that's coming out of your compressor is dry, there is no real, real benefit at most levels, unless you're at a professional level, to using nitrogen over compressed air. So there's no real need for you to spend that money and purchase that nitrogen right. that nitrogen track side. Okay. Um, this is a race tire. We've also got, I mean, a number of different examples between a street tire. Um, what really, I mean, to, to some of us, you know, they're they're all tires. But I mean, what is what is the reason why you would go and actually purchase, um, you know, a set of race tires or track day tires uh, over just using your normal DOT? Oh the track wow, day? that is a Did great. I, can I give? Can I set that up any better wow, for you? That's a great softball. question. Softball. It was a softball. For you. you know, I got to tell you a really short story. A friend of mine ha has a, a very high performing motorcycle, and he went to the track day, and it has all the electronics on it. And the electronics were telling him, hey, the tire's spinning up. Go ahead and dial in more traction control or whatever. And he didn't, and he went down, unfortunately. He's okay, but he went down. Now, when we get into an, a, a, a race tire versus an ultra high performance tire, and just uh, on, on general principle of construction, we've got Aramid, we've got sometimes a lot of exotic compounds with the rubber, the natural synthetic rubber, the silica, the carbon black, and that kind of thing. Not so much on a street tire. Okay. So, also this street tire has got steel in it as some of the body, uh, the belts and body plies and things like that. So a street tire is going to heat up, maintain a higher temperature, and probably go away quicker on the track. Right. A race tire on the track will heat up, but it's going to be more consistent, it's going to be lighter. So when you get on the racetrack and you're a serious rider, you're almost expert level, and you're on your street tire, you cannot expect that tire to come near the performance, near the traction, near the turn-in speed, even the crown radius. And let's take this, this tire, for example. When this tire was new, it's almost a V-shape here. Because we assume that because this is a race tire, you're going to spend most of your time on the sidewall. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Whereas when we talk about this tire, which is a rear tire as well, you can notice it's not as V-shaped. It's more round because we assume because it's a street tire, you're gonna spend most of your time here. So on this tire, full-blown race tire, you got a bigger, better contact patch, better compound to give you more traction. On this one, smaller contact patch, right. which is not good on the track. Different compounds set up for street use. And uh, you know, I talk to racers a lot of times, or even people who want, are interested in racing them. They just bought their first super bike, and I, I can't wait to do a track day. And TJ, why can't I use a DOT race tire on the street? Wow, you got to keep this tire up to temperature. Remember, this one's got steel; it's going to maintain temperature. Right. As soon as you get stop at a red light with this tire, you're going to lose tire temperature, okay. and then bam, you're going to be on your behind. Right. So it's very important to make sure you do never, ever use a designated race tire, DOT'd or otherwise, on the street. 
Apparently. It will not benefit you in either way unless you have a really good insurance policy to pay for right. wadding up your motorcycle. Keep race tires on the track, keep street tires on the street. Very different. You can even get to a hybrid or something like this that is a, uh, a, a track day tire. That's fine either way. But don't expect this to perform at the level of this racing slick on the track. Awesome. Very cool. Guys, we're with uh, TJ Tennant from Bridgestone. He's the engineering manager. Uh, we're going to hit a quick commercial break. We're going to come back for more really great, smart stuff. Man, stick with us. This segment was brought to you by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. For protective jeans that fit your lifestyle, it's Bullet Jeans. EDR Performance, the premier motorcycle and performance racing center on the West Coast. That's EDRPerformance.com. Welcome back, guys. We're here with TJ Tennant, who's the engineering manager from Bridgestone Firestone. And it's been an awesome show. A lot of tech stuff. Uh, I've learned so much today. Uh, I've got one. I've, actually, I've got two more questions for you while we've got you here. So uh, one of those is that, you know, you look at the echelon racing for what we cover, uh, which is MotoGP. And, um, you know, Dorna, who picked Bridgestone as a tire over the other competition. Why do you think they went with Bridgestone? Wow, you know, Bridgestone is such a great company. I, I gotta be honest, and not just because I work for them. They do make very, very good products, superior products. And a lot of the employees, most, almost all the employees have the same level of passion that I have. So Bridgestone also has a history of racing. We were in Formula One, I mean, and of course Firestone and Indy with the Indy 500 and some of that stuff, even Champ Car in its heyday, and now MotoGP. And if you remember, not too long ago with, with the battle with Michelin and Bridgestone mm -hmm. and uh, and, and Bridgestone was able to, to make a better product at that time. Each tire manufacturer is going to have its day. And that fortunately, that was our day. But I think when you get into racing or you get even, even products that go to the retail public, it's about passion and quality. And I think if you don't have that passion that oozes out from your blood, from your skin, and you eat and sleep racing and tires, it's hard to be on top because that's your edge. And if you don't have that edge, you may have a good product, you'll never have a great freaking product. And if you don't have great employees who have the level of passion that I have for tires, for motorcycles, owning over 100 motorcycles, former racers still involved, teaching motorcycle classes, educating, even our, our local dealers, working with them to do tire seminars, maybe not at this level, but at a retail level to help them understand tires and performance, you can't be the best you might as well get out of the game. And it's not really a game, it's a business, but you might as well just close the doors and go home. So you have to have that passion. Right, and you know, speaking of being the best, you, you were telling a story earlier uh, about a tire that you helped create and, and really invent that was so good it ended up becoming illegal <laughs> that they couldn't use it at races. So um, you've got a passion for racing. I mean, you've got you know, something that, I mean, when, when you're talking about this stuff, you know, you're literally glow, glowing. Where do you think that passion from racing for you personally, where does that come from? I, I, I don't know. I've always loved you know, bikes and cars. And, and when I went to college to become an engineer, I knew that I wanted had to have something to do with the automotive industry. I didn't know what at the time. I didn't even know that I would get a chance to work for Bridgestone, but the opportunity showed up. And it's kind of a funny story because I got a call from my corporate office and I was always a motorcyclist. And they said, hey, we got a motorcycle racing program. We need an engineering guy. Would you be interested? And I hung up. <laughs> 
So they called me back and said, hey, you know, we want you to come up here. And I said, are you guys kidding me? How soon? I'll be up there tomorrow. Right. <laughs> and that's how my career started with Bridgestone, especially with motorcycling and moving on to, you know, karting and open wheel racing, being a project manager there. It's been just been a great ride. I'm, I, hopefully I don't cry or anything, <laughs> not from being sad, because it's been such a great ride with such a great company. Having the opportunity to meet people like you, meet some of your viewing audience out in Daytona when I'm doing tire surveys and people saying, hey, I can't believe you're here on your hands and knees doing this. You said you did. But for me, it's just about an unchallenged love for what, I, what I'm doing with my personal life and my business life, which fortunately happened to be one and the same. Nice. And that's a rare opportunity that yeah. anybody can say their hobby is something they get paid for. Well, thanks for coming today, man. I'm telling you, it was a it was a pleasure. We are going to have you back. If you'll come back, we want to have you back. <laughs> I'd love so, to be all right. back. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> Guys, once again, TJ Tennant from Bridgestone, the engin engineering manager. And uh, we're going to take one more quick break, and we'll be right back. SVRacingParts.com, the exclusive importer and distributor of the KO Mini GP MR125 race bike. That's SVRacingParts.com. Great rates for great rides. Geico Motorcycle. See how much you could save. Woodcraft Technologies. Making products for racers by racers at woodcraft-cfm.com. Chuck Walla Valley Raceway. 17 corners to challenge even the most experienced rider. Go race cvr.com. <laughs> So last week we got some really, really bad news that we lost a member of the Next Moto Champion family. Uh, Danielle and I both uh, just really enjoyed our time covering Dane Westby and his career um, along with his dad Trig, and uh, he's a guy who we're sorely, sorely going to miss. I'd say uh, even though Dane hadn't won a championship yet, he is a true champion to us, and I'm just glad we got the privilege to not only have him on the cover, but have him in studio just a few weeks ago um, for what I'd say was probably one of my favorite interviews with him. I've had um, years of interviews with him, and that, I'd say, was one of the best times I've had, and I'm just glad they made the trip out. Uh, we made the trip out to Tulsa on Friday to share memories and um, the service with his family and friends, and it was the most incredible turnout of people. About 150 motorcycles showed up, and Road Racing World was there, Kevin Schwantz was there, Colin Edwards, Scott Russell, uh, Corey West, a number of other riders as well, and it was just probably the nicest way to really um, pay homage to such a great person, and it really did speak volumes to the person he was, and he's really going to be missed, especially around here. So. Uh, I'd say on that note, we just wanted to share a little video that we put together about a year ago this month um, out in Tulsa, Thunder over at Thunder Multimedia, put together a really great video that uh, I think will help us all in remembering just exactly who Dane was and why we loved him so much. Enjoy. <laughs> I live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I really do like it here. You know, um, it's not really much to write home about, but it is home. So I've been living here all my life. My parents lived here, my grandparents lived here. I mean, right now my life is great. I'm, I'm fortunate enough to uh, only have to race, so I get to train. I ride my bicycle, I ride my mountain bike, um, anything on two wheels. And, um, you know, I do some other land work, and remodeling a little bit and that keeps me in shape too but mainly I just two wheels all the time my 
my dad, you know, he definitely got me into racing. It's always been a two-wheel obsession with me and my dad. And he used to race, and he had a PW50 Yamaha that he used to use for a pit bike, and that was what I learned to ride on. You know, my dad's always been behind me. We, we kind of just rode casually together for a lot of years, just having fun. And then when I was about 16, he said, hey, you know, why don't we try some road racing? That's what I used to do, and I, I always had kind of an interest in it, and we bought a a used bike and went and rode. I happen to be pretty good at it. And I'm very fortunate to, to be surrounded by all these bikes and to have a place where I can work on my bikes. And my dad is totally my, one of my best buddies, you know, great relationship with my family. And maybe that's part of the reason I stay here in Oklahoma. Okay, well, I call this the R&D department, basically for racing and dicking off. So I come over here and I work on all my old race bikes. Uh, uh, old bikes, uh, vintage stuff, mostly my stuff. I don't do much public work. I buy bikes, fix them up, and I have a hard time selling them then because I get attracted to them and attached to them. So, so much work is involved. But that's what this is for, is to, you know, just rebuild old stuff and have a lot of fun with the old bikes. I hang out with my best buddy Chauncey a lot, and uh, we're just really like-minded and, and do all the same things. We ride many bikes. He rides, I, I can't get him to ride the bicycle, but he loves to ride the motorbikes, and, um, and that's pretty much what do we do. In the morning, I go and ride my bicycle, and he gets off work about one or two in the afternoon and go ride. The best flat track in Tulsa. It's a wonderful place to go out and ride. We have a little TT on the inside. We play on that, too. It's going to be a lot of fun. race comes around, there's only so much you can do to be ready. Ride your bicycle, riding your motorcycle, doing whatever you can. So that's what I've been doing, blasting it out. The intensity of road racing isn't like any other sport. I mean, I ride all sorts of motorcycles, but you can't get the thrill of throwing a heavy bike around at 160 miles an hour and rubbing elbows with your buddies or, or not buddies. There's just no other type of racing that's like it. It's just amazing that we've aligned with Yamaha and Yamalube this year, which are both great companies, and Yamalube is looking to expand into a road racing team, and, and I think that I can really represent them well. I'm, uh, I'm going to be ferocious in 2014. Wolverine's definitely going to come out. i got to thank Scott Russell for that. He uh, was announcing at the Daytona Turner a couple years ago, and he said something like, oh, he's not like a Wolverine out there, he's so ferocious, and uh, just kind of stuck, you know, sideburns don't hurt. And uh, I really like to embrace the the ferocious weasel aspect more than the X-Men because uh, oh, if you look into it, Wolverines, nobody messes with the Wolverine. They just don't take any gas. The Wolverine has always been in there, but he comes out sometimes uh, more often than others. This is Cole. Clearly Cole has a bad attitude and a long torso. For a better attitude, Cole is going to need professional psychological help. For his long torso, professional psychological help is already here. Build brand clothing shirts specifically feature two extra inches of length, a tubular fit, and the world's most comfortable 30 singles cotton fabric. Solve a problem in your life. Buy a shirt from BuiltClothing.com and see why the details in fit and quality make our shirts superior. For safe and structured track days, it's N2 Track Days. Check out their schedule at n2td.org. TT Moto Gear, your source for premium products and service. And that video really captures the essence of Dane Westby. We'll never forget 
the double zeros. So as we look ahead to next weekend, we've got history in the making. It's the inaugural Moto America at Coda, and of course that's the one that's combined with MotoGP. So we're looking forward to covering this event. It's going to be exciting. There's going to be a lot going on. It's an action-packed weekend. Right, and this weekend, if you're available, there's a, still a few spots uh, with N2 track days at Road Atlanta, VIR, and Summit Point. But if you can't make it this weekend, check out N2TD.org for upcoming events in your area. And for the future of motorcycle racings or other tech tips like some of the stuff you saw today, it's all right here at Next Moto Champion. <laughs> you can get a hundred thousand hits 100, tomorrow, hits in man. First, in the first ten minutes, we just I'll be had, like, "Who was that crazy dude?" We just dude. had it up there. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me wipe my tears off here. You got me laughing up here. <laughs>